In an earlier video, I told you that we would be able to find out what the motion ends up looking like when a charge moves through a magnetic field. Um, remember, anytime a charge moves through a magnetic field, as long as there's some angle between the velocity and the magnetic field, then it'll actually be curved, right? It'll, it'll, it'll move. Um, it'll be veered off its normal path. Um, but what does that path end up looking like? And that is what we're going to explore in this video. It's actually kind of interesting and has many, many um, engineering and medical applications. So let's suppose that we have a magnetic field going in like this again. Okay. And let's suppose that I have a proton heading into that magnetic field. Okay. So if we have this velocity go this way, right? Again, we take our hands. Fingers pointed in the direction of the velocity of the particle. Palm is pointed in the direction of the magnetic field. And then your thumb is the direction of the force. So this particle would feel a force in this direction. Okay? So that means then when it, when it gets into the magnetic field, now it's suddenly it's going this way. Right? Because the force is, you know, is veering it up. Right? Okay. So now let's do right-hand rule again. Now instead, okay, the our fingers are pointing in the direction of the particle. Now it's diagonal, right? And our palms again point in the direction of the magnetic field. And so our thumb then is the direction of the force. Now the force is this way, right? So there's this force in this direction on this particle, right? So now what does that mean? It means the particle's going upwards. Let's do it again. Now we have our particle going up. Palm is in the direction of the magnetic field. Thumb points to the left. Now it wants to go this way, right? What do you, do you see what's going on? Do you see where this is leading? I think you do. This leads to the point where you end up getting a full circle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with, if I have a full magnetic field like this, and I have a particle that enters it like this, then you actually get circular motion where this spins around and around and around and around and around and around in a circle indefinitely, okay? And this is called cyclotron motion. Many of you have probably heard about the cyclotron in CERN, this huge, huge uh, particle collider um, that like, you know, accelerates particles and smacks them into each other to find out what the most fundamental particles in the universe are. And this is how it happens. You put them inside of a magnetic field, they spin at a certain radius, and you can get that acceleration to go faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster to the point where they smack into each other and you have um, smaller particles. Maybe you remember, I think it was 2012, the discovery of this Higgs boson, which was just huge Nobel win prize winning discovery um, because the Higgs boson creates a field that allows all the rest of matter to feel mass, um, which is huge um, because if there's no mass, there's no gravity. If there's no gravity, there's no stars. If there's no stars, there's no planets. If there's no planets, there's no people. And so it's a very, very, very important discovery. Okay, so the question is then, what radius are these circles going to spin at? All right, and how would we go about solving that? So let's take a look at what we know. We know that F equals MA, right? So much of physics just starts right there with F equals MA. And what force is causing this particle to go in a circle? You know it, magnetic force, QVB. And we're gonna not use a sine theta because in this case we know that the velocity is perpendicular to the B field, okay? And you may remember that what is A when a particle is going in a circle, all right? A is not just any normal A, it's the A for centripetal acceleration. And maybe you remember, maybe you don't, but I'm just gonna tell you, that's mv squared over r, right? So centripetal force is mv squared over r, centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, okay? Oh my, we have an r there. It looks like we could very easily solve for that radius. So the radius of any kind of cyclotron motion is just gonna be mv squared over q v b, but if you notice, there's two v's on top and one v on the bottom, so I can cancel that with that, and so I get r 
equals mv over qb. Pretty powerful, okay? So we can find out how, you know, wide that radius is when you have uh, any kind of a charged particle undergoing cyclotron motion, okay? And one of the most common types of cyclotron motion that we actually talked about um, when we started this series of videos is the auroras, right? Remember I said the Earth has this magnetic field, right? And so here's the Earth, okay? And then here's the magnetic field, just... So remember, magnetic north, so this is south, south, okay? And I said that these electrons would come flying in, right? Well, if these electrons come flying in, they see uh, field lines, right? And they want to wrap around them, right? Just like, just like this is like creating a circle around these field lines going in, these particles are going to create, are going to have circular motion around these field lines like this. That is cyclotron motion. This is the same thing as this, which gives rise to the auroras. All right, very, very cool um, application and beautiful application of this concept. Um, so you'll see in the next slide, there's uh, some videos that show what these solar winds look like when they're hitting the Earth and um, why the, that, that spinning happens. Um, and we have like a little bit of a problem here that we can solve very easily and find out what would be the radius of the little circles of the electrons due to the Earth's magnetic field. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it. It says, if the speed of solar wind is about 700,000 meters per second, what is the radius of the circles of the electrons due to the Earth's magnetic field at the poles? All right, let's set this up. Again, radius equals mv over qb, right? Right, and again, how do we get that? Well, we know that QVB equals MV squared over R. So anytime you forget this, you can just rem remember by solving for R. So R, well, one of these Vs cancels. R will equal MV over QB. Okay, lovely. All right, so what is the mass of an electron? We know it's 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31. What is the velocity? Well. Those electrons are shooting in at 700,000 meters per second. Okay, what's the charge on an electron? You all know that, like the back of your hand now, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And B, the magnetic field of the Earth is, wow, that is something you're gonna have to look up. What is the magnetic field of the Earth in Tesla's um, I personally am drawing a blank right now, and I leave it to you to complete this problem. Good luck.